Alright guys, welcome back yet again. I am here with Aaron Wedderburn. He is another cinematographer and DP based in Toronto. So in today's video we're going to be doing a workflow breakdown. Uh, this pretty much goes over how we structure our videos, uh, planning them, storyboards, treatments, um, just general write-ups and how we um, discuss things and convey them to our clients to actually go with them. Uh, and also today we're wearing jackets, so. <laughs> it's very cold. It's very cold outside. So with any good music video um, comes great music. So the first thing that we like to do is take the song that is for the music video and listen to that a million times over. Uh, usually the client will send us over either a rough draft if it's not complete yet or the final version to an email. Uh, once we get that, we keep playing it over and over again until it's pretty much ingrained in our minds. Yeah. This allows us to actually get a tone and feel of the song and what we actually want to do uh, thematically for the video. Um, so this kind of leads us into uh, a basic write-up on a Word document. Um, yeah. So with this, uh, pretty much we just write up our kind of our ideas and like brainstorm some things quickly. So pretty much what we do is after we listen to the song, we start to brainstorm. Uh, we kind of have sometimes the artist will give us like a theme that they want to go for for example fame holiday for no way he said that he wanted it to be more of a halloween type theme yeah vampire um, exactly it's kind of brainstorm around that we come up with some music videos as a reference so one video was which one was uh the the chris brown music video i don't remember the name of it but there was one where um he's with his friends and um he gets pretty much um, bitten by a vampire, kind of goes on this like journey to find this girl, I believe, in like this vampire club. No way, it was based off of multiple videos like that. So the Chris Brown video, um, there was also, of course, Michael Jackson thriller. We took yeah. major inspiration from being the only crazy Hollywood-looking cinematic Halloween music video I've ever seen before on YouTube. Especially, you could even say the um, ending for No Way was very similar to Thriller as well. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Even Blade. I feel like that's also a big. Of course, vampires in the nightclub vibe. Yeah. I uh, wanted to create a concept similar to that, of course, in our own way. But with the write-up, of course, we just bro like, broke it down. Okay, what do we want to include? Uh, what are some cool ideas? Where can we possibly shoot this? Um, mm -hmm. So it all, it all comes down to, like, you know, just writing down your ideas first and then moving that ideas into a storyboard. Basically, the storyboard kind of goes over our shot ideas, um, what we think should go where in the music video and how we want to approach them, what lenses, how wide or how close we're doing it, um, mm -hmm. even down to um, where the actors are placed in every single shot. Not every video has a storyboard, but it is very important to do this sometimes, especially for a bigger and more cinematic video. Yeah, especially when you're renting gear or loaning gear because it helps you make a solid uh, gear list. We knew that we wanted to have a smoke machine for the, for the intro because of the storyboard, but of course the intro was outside, so we had to then get a generator. Doing something as simple as pre-production, it, it helps, it goes a long way. Location scouting is a big deal as well. Um, for this video specifically, we didn't really do too much location scouting. Um, the place we shot at, I've actually been to before, is a uh, local bar, club, or lounge in Brampton. The artist actually has gone to these places before us. Like Usually that's our job as directors and cinematographers yeah. to go and scout for pre-production, this artist was so involved that he actually wanted to do it himself. So he did, and it actually worked out very well. Yeah. He picked out all the spots he wanted to shoot at. Um, when we arrived, of course, on the day of shooting, perfect, they looked great, look how the pictures looked. Um, mm -hmm. Very excited to shoot there, all the lighting was great. Um, but just goes to show you that pre-scouting your locations is a lot easier than trying to find something last minute, trying to roll up and run in gun style. Um, the more you have planned out for your locations, the easier it is to set up your stuff. And of course, uh, permission is key, if this is a private property or a place that you know you really shouldn't be asking for permission is probably the best way of doing it um, rather than just sneaking in and filming that can almost 100% never go well <laughs> exactly it's, it's pretty much like a surefire way to fail uh, before even really getting a video out yeah, so like you're not just gonna run inside of like a supermarket with your rig and go like okay standing on top of the watermelons over there I'm gonna get a sick shot yeah so not just the best not the best or ideal thing to do um, exactly. in any music video situation but all this being said we also have to factor in the client so the client uh, he does want to you know of course be in and see all the work we're doing so storyboard and stuff like that but the most important part to this to bring it all together is the treatment yeah. Um, the treatment pretty much is your golden seal to actually shooting the video. Uh, you can storyboard away all you want. Sometimes you do that after the treatment. The treatment is a combination of pretty much everything you're doing all in one. You have to keep in mind, the client doesn't want to keep reading different Word documents and different PDFs and yeah. different things. The treatment kind of, if you have the right one, of course, uh, sums it all up into one. Uh, you can also send this out to the people on set. So the extra cast members that we had acting as vampires, just extras on set, they saw the treatment and it was a very easy to read format. 
Um, yeah. With the treatment, you never want to go too in depth. Um, for my treatment personally that I will be selling soon, uh, we actually do have about four or five different pages. So the treatment pretty much just goes over the basic concept and theme of the video. Uh, this is so client and cast members can see exactly what we're thinking about and no one's confused on set. The second page for us, what we usually do is have um, the visual ideas, something that represents what we're trying to achieve. Now for us, we usually take ideas from other videos and kind of implement them in our own ways. Um, I think on the third page, we have a visual breakdown of exactly what we're trying to achieve uh, effects wise or cinematography wise. What kind of color theme are we going with? Are we using lots of effects? Are we using practical things? So I'm not gonna break down my entire uh, treatment, but pretty much it sums up everything that you should be doing for the video or will be doing for the video. Yeah, after that, it's mainly just shooting the video. So obviously you would have your gear list, you would already have the gear and you'd be on set. Um, it's always good to have a really good attitude on set because if something goes wrong, you don't want to sulk about it. That's just gonna make everybody else feel bad and then it's gonna make the day be very, very long. There are certain things that, of course, you cannot let slide. I don't know, makeup taking too long or just one of the extras came half an hour late. Then kind of come up with remedies around that. For example, what we usually do is that if someone's running late, we might stage an area and capture some B-roll there, main artist, or even cut some of the models that are on set and just capture some B-roll there so we're being a bit productive. Yeah, so a great example for this actually would be when we started No Way, uh, the first scene was actually in the club and of course everyone's getting ready. Um, no one was really ready makeup wise to start filming. So we had this glass table where we knew the first scene was gonna be. So like Aaron said, we started setting up pretty much the table with the money all over it. Got him to actually uh, film a couple scenes of B-roll, slow motion shots we can put in the music video. Um, mm -hmm. So as people are coming out slowly, we already have some stuff shot. We feel a little bit more productive and a little bit better about ourselves that we know we got something done uh, while everyone's getting ready still. You want a fun set all around. You want everyone to be smiling, having a good time while listening to you. It's the most important part for directing or being a cinematographer, making sure people are aware of you and uh, what, what you're telling them. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Because at the end of the day, it's still your set. So for this video specifically, we actually rented out Astera lights. Um, they are neon tube lights, fully RGB controllable. They can do patterns and animations. Um, are also very nice because they are not wired. They are all yeah. wireless and they're so easy to use. Uh, you just mm -hmm. turn them on, use the controller app, and they run like for what, like eight or so hours? They yeah, run for a long very time. very long. They long even come time. with their own inv individual stands and they yeah. come with the charging case as so well. Great. So, I mean, they're, if you could really afford a stairs, get a stairs. Stairs to buy are like $7,000, but to rent them, usually from our area is around like $300 to $500, depending yeah. on who you're renting them from and for how long. For our set, we just use the Asteras, we do eight of them and we had our key light, which was just our Godox uh, SL60 the mm -hmm. whole time. Uh, didn't really use anything else. We had our panel light maybe just giving off some like highlight roll off on faces and just giving some uh, more backlighting. Yeah. That's pretty much all we really use that for, but three main light sources, Astera's, key light, and a panel light just for backlighting. One thing to note about uh, lighting is safety, really, especially when you're dealing with uh, large light poles and cables and everything. I usually tape them down around corners and uh, ledges just so there's no tripping hazards or yeah. anything. Because when we, we were in a bar with the lights off and we were using just Asteras to, to light. So, I mean, the second we had to pick up those and move to another location, it was pitch black. So if you tripped over a cable, you don't want any liabilities on site. And it's, it's a bit of a hassle to kind of do when you're a one-man band. So yeah. it's really great just having that extra person just help you with lighting. Keeping safety in mind for moving locations or for even ending your music video shoot, what we typically like to do is make sure everything again is in place and you want to keep everything organized and making sure that things go back in their case correctly. This is to ensure that when you're moving gear that things are not rattling all over the place in your car or just in general things are falling out while you're walking. That's probably the worst case scenario. I pretty much triple check before leaving any location uh, on a shoot just to make sure that we are not forgetting a single thing. Yeah. Uh, and then making sure any cast and crew members also don't forget their stuff as well. Yeah, sometimes you don't even have the ability to go back. Sometimes it's once the studio is locked up, it's locked up. Yeah. So it's always good to double check before you leave. Exactly. Always keep up the good energy, always keep your gear and yourself safe. 
Uh, respect the location and everyone around you and hopefully they'll respect you back. All right, so that pretty much sums up everything today in our video. Um, if you guys liked it, please leave a thumbs up, comment down below what you think, and make sure you are subscribed to me and to Aaron's channel. All his links will be down in the description below. So yeah. don't forget to do that. And also click the ping notification at the top. Yes, I'm calling it a ping still to watch my last video. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys who are taking the time out of your day to watch my content. All right, guys, peace out. Peace.